Yeah, so the past two years, I've got a lot more anxiety. I actually think I was depressed at one point. Like, my house would be a fucking stay, mm. and I'd be not getting out of bed or not wanting to get out of bed. Like, pretty, like, pretty dark, that constant not really knowing how to balance things. Mm. I think that just gave me anxiety. I've had my like, first panic attacks like really? last year, yeah. It was, it was almost like imposter syndrome. I, f I felt like, why are these people even here to see me? Like, mm. I just, I'm a bloke from Stoke and I went on Love Island. I've done nothing special. Mm. And that's been one of the main things that's actually made me so happy about doing music is because the, the public opinion of Love Islanders is pretty toxic now. So do you feel like you lost yourself? Yeah, like I, I did, yeah, 100%. And I was just like, what am I actually doing? Like, it actually makes me upset. Mm. But then, yeah, I turned it all around. I was just like, you know what? I am who I am. I would never have thought for one minute mm. that you would have had all that going on. Like I talk about people. things now that I've never even spoke about before. So. Yeah, I can tell, man. To see you doing what you're doing at the moment, like you've just gone number one with like Craig David. Oh, mad, isn't it? Like French Montana, Hardy Caprio, Clean Bandit. You have literally done it, bro, in a big way. I love telling people that story. Yeah. I love sitting down and telling people, I see Wesley <laughs> going, he told me he was going to do this. People have been actually messaging me saying, it's so good to see the old you back. Special day today. We've got Wes Nelson coming into the studio. So I've had to fix up, look sharp, wear a control club, their new range is popping, oversized hoodie, combats, fit me like a glove. I am ready. This is going to be a big episode. He's just gone number one with Craig David. Cheers! Cheers! Gotta walk into the tube! <laughs> yeah, oh, so. yeah man. What's well. happening, man? You okay? You good? I'm well, I'm well. Wow, look at this big old man. What are you talking about? He's all playing games, though. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my crib, bro. What's good, what's good? Welcome to Lunas. Right? I got you set up, man. What? I've got, wait, I know where it's. It was I know. That broke last week. Yeah, it's because right. this hinge went up. I'm okay. Sorry. I was Let's like, I was like. <laughs> From the top. Let's go. Right. I'm Wes Nelson, and this is learning as I go. Boom! <laughs> wow! Can we believe it, guys? We have leveled up, man. I can't <laughs> hey, don't believe. do that, Dan. But nah, but I'm honestly, just a bloke from Stoke, mate. Nah, but honestly, mate, I am so gassed to have Wes Nelson in the building, man. Like, what you've achieved... I'm here with Scott Thomas. What are you oh, talking about? Oi. I like this. I like that. Over Ryan Thomas, though, yeah? Oh, wait. Don't make ah. me do this. Yeah? <laughs> no, honestly, Equal. mate, like, I've watched... I've been, well, I've been part of your journey a little bit, and we'll talk about that later yeah. on. But to see you doing what you're doing at the moment, like you've just gone number one with like Craig David. Oh, he's mad, isn't it? Like, that is weird, isn't I, it? I can't even contemplate, but put that to one side, like French Montana, Hardy Caprio, um, Clean Bandit. You have literally done it, bro, in a big way. And We're I just want to say, yeah, man, yeah. well done, man. Thank you so much. Because it's Appreciate not easy. That, it's not easy, bro, to like transition. Let's, let's go back to the start, right? So yeah. you started off, am I right? Like before Love Island, it was a, a nuclear, let me get this right, Nuclear systems, no, nuclear design systems engineer. The other way around. You was oh, right the first time. Nuclear system dude. design engineer. Same thing, same thing. But yeah, so I was, a, I was, a, I was training in it. So I wasn't, I wasn't accomplished. There, a couple of people were like, "You wasn't it?" I was like, "Yeah, I was." I was, oh, like I was in uni. I was, yeah, I was, yeah, nineteen, nineteen wow. when I started it. But they paid like a, a full scholarship sort of thing. So I went. They, we did one day a week uni, and then the rest of it I was working. But we just did a really condensed day where we just did the full day in in uni basically but really good i got paid to get my education i got paid while i was doing my education yeah. and i got to work on the job sort of thing so what was like the vision from being a, a young kid were you quite academic because i was a little bit academic or no yes and no so like i was academic yeah i guess so but at the same time i wasn't um i just worked hard all right so when you're in school then like what was like when people ask you what you want to be when you grow yeah. up what was the number one answer so i would say to them because I was trying to think, like, what's practical? Yeah, yeah. And everyone's sort of thinking, I'm a very practical thing. So I'd be like, oh, you want to be an engineer, like my dad. So my old man was a mechanical engineer. He worked for Bentley for years and years. Um, but before that, he was, like, in the pit, and he was proper, like, proper grafter and really did come up from nothing. So I loved the fact that he'd gone from, like, working in the pit on the face of the, uh, the, of the mine, one of seven coming from Jamaica. Like, mm. people always think that he's, my, my parents are loaded for some reason as well. Oh, really? It's just not the case. Wow. Like, my mum was a PA in a university and my dad. Yeah, there's was, been headlines, there's been stories yeah, about that. Which is nuts, which is nuts. Like, right. 
So I may as well address that. Yeah, they're not loaded. <laughs> yeah. My mum was a PA in um, university and my, my old man, he was an engineer and he, he worked his way up to that, but he was by no means came from money. Mm. Um, so I always wanted to follow in his footsteps because I thought, oh, that's sick. That's possible. Mm. And obviously my brother, he's playing football and he was always better than me. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, a, he's a good footballer. No but what I loved doing was going in and out of different bits and bits and bobs like, I really like it. I really enjoy oh, skiing or Muay Thai or football. So I'd dabble in everything. He was just football. Do you know what so I, I mean, was going to say about you? I've got a mate, uh, Richard Fleishman. I call him Wonder Boy because yeah. anything he does, he can do it sick. Like, yeah. and it's so annoying. And I feel like you're one of those guys. Like, Ryan, obviously we saw that on the games. Ryan, yeah. Ryan hates me for it. Yeah. <laughs> he messaged me the other day in the, in the group chat. We've got this little group chat after the games. He's just like, Oh, Wes. Oh, Wes, I've just watched you on Dancing on Ice. Oh, mate. <laughs> oh, mate, what am I going to do? <laughs> he said that you fell twice of a day. Yeah, no, and he I said felt you, so you bad. You said to me, you went, you went, yeah, I knew you were going to fall again. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I know he beats himself up a bit, yeah, doesn't he, right? Yeah. So when he'd fallen the first time, I know he would have been a bit flustered. I was like, he's probably going to fall I love how this is getting airtime on my podcast. Ryan would be fuming about yeah. this. <laughs> but, no, but that's what shines through you, Wes. It sounds like... And it, I'm glad that you said it from an early age. You kind of like dipped your toe in different things. Yeah. Um, and do you think that's like part of your personality? I think so. As I've also been diagnosed with ADHD and I know that sounds like... Um, Same, just recently. Um, like quite... And I think a lot of people are being like... Think they have it because of the TikTok diagnosing yeah, and yeah, this. Yeah. But and it, maybe maybe there is a rise in it, but one of the characteristics is that you 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 you, you hyper fixate on certain things right so i'd i'd be obsessed with golf and then i'd be obsessed with it for about 8 or 9 weeks and then i would completely forget about it because now i'm obsessed with go karting yeah or now i'm obsessed with this so i think it's one of the it, it's like almost a superpower in that sense that i always want i always have to know what's over the hill like and i always and then once i'm over the hill i'm like right how can i be the best at this wow so you went from obviously you were, you're doing this this scholarship in, in nuclear engineering, yeah, and then you end up on Love Island. How yeah, did, how, did that, how, how did that happen? I wanted to know what was over the hill, didn't I? Oh, wow. <laughs> there was a lot over the hill. <laughs> Jeez, you, you know, you know what? So I, I got asked. Yeah. Um, how did he find you? Um, Instagram. Right. Um, and they was just like, it wasn't even them. I think it was a manager. He was just like, oh, would you um. Would you want to go on the show? Like, I can get you through some of the interviews. Lie. Did like seven. Right. Um, anyway, got it. And I was 19 at the time when they'd asked. So I was like, I'm 19 years old. I've just got four weeks of holidays. Why not? I'm going to Love Island, aren't and What I? did your, your mum and dad say? They're sound. Yeah. I think, because I've been asked by a couple of shows before to do stuff, and then I'd, I'd not gone and done them. So How would he find you? You know, was your Instagram popping then? Did you? I think it was doing. Yeah, it was like I think it was on like sixty thousand at the oh, time. What? How? From like posting fighting videos and shameless light lighty pictures, probably. Really? Yeah, I was an wow. absolute. I was a bit. It's a, it a bit embarrassing. No way, sixty thousand before you went on. I think so. That's I think. Mad. I think about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so but you, I, I was like trying to. Yeah, I was just trying to. Gra I was trying to graft on that as well. Yeah, yeah. I was doing nothing. Was making no money, but it was. I was trying. No way. So you went on to Love Island, and what was your game plan? Like, not in terms of, like, with no. like, the girls in there, but, I mean, was there, like, oh, was it just the experience you went on there for? I just wanted to go on for a laugh. Yeah, yeah. And I think the people who've gone on and done actually well are people who've just gone on and thought, oh, this will be a laugh, wouldn't it? Yeah. And I think now a lot of people aren't necessarily doing as well or, or finding as many things after because they've gone on and took it too serious. Mm. And then people's personalities aren't showing through, like, the true colours. I just went on and had a giggle. Mm. And then when, even when stuff like, when shit hit the fan with like Laura and stuff, that was just being on it. I could have just cruised with Laura and just mm. probably made it to the final. But I think I was just like, I wasn't actually, I was happy, but I could have been happier. Mm. You're so young as well though, bro. Like, um, do you know what I mean? I just wanted to go on and have a laugh. And I think that's like your year, my year. Like I think we we, we all went on and had a, a proper good laugh. Mm. And, do you like, think that's the key to life though, Wes? Because I've, I've been thinking recently, right? It's yeah. almost like the less you want something, yeah? The more you get it. Yeah, but you just got to throw yourself in it. Like, honestly, like, honestly, and, and when people say, oh, what's your guidance for people that are on it? It's just like, just be yourself. And it sounds so basic and cliche, but no, 90% of them aren't. Mm. Like, so it's not that cliche, is it? Like, people are trying to put on this persona or people are getting butt hurt by things that aren't mm. even that crazy. 
Um, Can we just say this this All Stars Love Island though, right? I thought they'd all, I thought they'd all go on, yeah, <laughs> and be all guarded and prim and yeah. proper. It's been the best series yeah, I've yeah. seen in ages. It's like they don't even know how the game is played. Yeah, yeah. You know what it is? It's because everyone else is playing it, so then they have to sort of be reactive. They can't be if you if you're walking along the fence and everyone's doing this, that, and the other, and mm. being honest, then everyone's got to follow suit, haven't they? Otherwise, you just get fallen by the wayside, sort mm. of thing. So you, obviously, you went on to Love Island. You were a firm favorite on there. You did so on that well on there, and you came out to all these different opportunities and. After Love Island, I know you did like you did Dancing on Ice. Yeah. And you smashed it on there. Did you win that? Or? No, I came second. Oh, fuming. It's a fix, man. It's a fix. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. It's a fix because you were next level. Oh, James on there. Jordan won, didn't he? He's oh, really? Did James strict, Jordan win? Yeah, oh, I can't say pro. that. Man. I like James. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's a good lad. And then you did obviously SAS Who Dares Wins. Yeah. You've done like a few different shows and stuff. But and, and at that point, did you have any direction? Because when you come out of Love Island, I remember when I came out, it was almost like, it was like, it was. Unlike sort of marked territory, you didn't yeah. really know where to go. And I had like not a lot of the managers didn't know what to didn't do really with Love Islanders because it was a new breed of reality stuff. You're sort of making the blueprint at that point. So I was doing like teeth whitening posts and all this yeah. like, all these different things. And I never felt like an influence or I never felt like I had a direction. Did you yeah. feel like that for a while? Yeah, and I hated it. Mm. So like I came out and I can remember doing like some brand deal brand deals. First I thought it was cool, like it was all right. Mm. And then I just started to get mad anxiety over posting and mm. feeling like I can't go for a dinner without having to take a picture of my out like do you know mm. I like to live in the present mm. and I don't really like posting a lot online um oh mate that's so just, that's like just, that's just hit me there it's just I hate even until genuinely this is not, not even a joke until like this past couple this past month or two I don't think I've enjoyed posting on Instagram for the past six years I hated mm. it like I'd get mad anxiety I'd have massive rows with my management not even me getting at them, just me be going missing. So like when I get under too much pressure like that and I get anxious, I just go missing. Wait a second, wait. So you get anxious? Like I find it hard to believe because Matt, a lot more over the past two years. Yeah, and it's mad that because and I'm a little bit the same. Like I'm super confident in so many ways. I'm a bit of an extrovert, but I'm also yeah. a mad introvert. Like I need to like do stuff like this, but then I need to like retreat. Do you, yeah. do you feel so, like sometimes? Yeah. So the past two years, I've got a lot more anxiety. I actually think I was depressed at one point now now i look back at it because mm. i've been looking at some of the and in fact i definitely was like my house would be a fucking stay mm. and i'll be not getting out of bed or not wanting to get out of bed like pretty like pretty dark mm. to be fair and drinking copious amounts mm. and you see me when i'm drunk right like mm. i don't stop mm. and, and you've not always been like that have you not always this is genuinely started like so it started from when i was doing pas and I hated doing PAs. Mm. I did loads of them because they're good money. Mm. But then I hated doing like going meeting people. Like I like meeting people and this, that, and the other. But when they're spilling drinks and they're hammered and they're like, and you come in going with a white shirt and now it's just cranberry. <laughs> and do you know, do you know, yeah, and, yeah. And, but then it's a lot meeting a lot of people and they just scream. Like, don't get me wrong. I love a conversation, but I don't like it in that sort of environment mm. so much. So I just get hammered mm. every night. Like if I'm doing two in a night, hammered at this place, hammered at that place, bring my mates, wake up, make one of them drive and get hammered on the way to the next one. And it was like that for about two years wow. and just be hammered. And, and what do you think you were kind of running away from then at that point? Because when, when you're drinking like that, I feel like you're just trying to escape. You, you, I didn't really know what I was like. I just didn't enjoy it. Like mm. it wasn't, it wasn't something I enjoyed. And I think I was, I was kidding myself that I did enjoy it. I'd be like, oh, this is great. We're getting paid all this money. Right? We're doing this, that, and the other. I hated it. So I was probably just suppressing the fact that it was it was almost like imposter syndrome. I, I felt like, why are these people even here to see me? Like, mm. I just, I'm a bloke from Stoke and I went on Love Island. I've done nothing special. Mm. And that's been one of the main things that's actually made me so happy about doing music is because the the public opinion of Love Islanders is pretty toxic now. Mm. So like, you can, you can like, it's, it's almost an, not an envy. It's just a, why the hell are they getting all this fame and this, that, and the other? And it's a fair point. I got it. And I was just like, why am I? Mm. So I had imposter syndrome. I was spending a stupid amount of money on my friends. Some of them not even friends. And stupid amount of money on clothes and this, that, and the other. And giving this the way and this and that away. Because I was just like, I don't deserve any of this. Like, what have I actually done to deserve any of it? So then when I came, when it came to doing music and stuff, that's when I felt like I had a purpose. And that's when things started to 
Oh, I to feel come like a bit you're nicer. a little bit like me, whereas like even when I was throwing parties for a living, it was all glamorized, right? Earning good money and everything else. And yeah, you're the ultimate lad. Yeah, you with these girls and whatever else. And yeah, but looks, you're not the man, though, are you? Yeah, really? You, deep down, because I'm quite driven and I and I, I want to have substance to my life. Yeah, that was like surface level, like success whereas mm. i knew what my potential was it sounds like you knew deep down what your potential was but didn't know where, where to yeah, go because imagine it. like when people say oh you're so talented at this or you're so talented at that and you're so talented at this but then you're talentless mm. do you know how frustrating that is because mm. like i know i've got a brain i was an engineer i know i can play this i can i know i can do that and i know i'm a very driven person but then to be labeled something that literally has an umbrella term that de discredits everything Mm. That sucks. But, you know what? but I've never had a, I've never been ashamed of going on the show. This is the thing. But I hate being just, just an islander. Oh, Do you know what I'm saying? It's people like you though, and the likes of Josh Denzel, and like there's certain people now who are kind of making Love Island incredible. Like to the point where for for about three, four years. I didn't want to be associated with Love Island because like, as soon as you come off the show, it's almost like you need to like recreate your, your brand identity and everything yeah. else. Whereas now I feel like I've put enough work in now with my businesses and everything else to kind of like look back with like fondness and talk about it. And it is a, an amazing platform. Yeah, yeah. And we probably both won't be here without it. Absolutely not. But at the same time, I get it. It's kind of like you put into a category. It's really hard to kind of break out. Of it that. is, but the, the thing is, you can't come on things like this or come, go on a on your story and scream it from the rooftops. I'm a music artist now. Mm. It doesn't work like that. You actually just got to put in the work and i've never done that mm. and i've never been ashamed of it this is the thing is but i'm not proud of of something that i don't feel like i've earned mm. just just you see what i'm saying so like now when it's come to music and stuff the only way that i could actually gain credibility is is by putting good good songs out, good songs out mm. and the first one they were like oh yeah you got lucky and then the second one came and they were like oh, fair, fair enough and then the third one and the fourth and they were like okay fair enough and that's when people start to understand but oh bro i was just having a little recap in the car on the way in and the one thing that i think is amazing we're going to talk about this more because i'm going to get to it but it's just like your songwriting like the lyrics it's just it's so clever and you and it's it's more than just like you said that like jumping on the track like you are just super talented if you so like the one you know it's it's crazy. It's like if you heard the stuff I'm actually writing now and the sort of stuff that I'm writing for other people now, it's so much better. Mm. Like I look back at them and I'm like, Ugh. but you know what? Let, let's let's hold off because I want to build up to, to to this moment. But let's just dig a little bit deeper on that when you talk about having anxiety and stuff. Yeah. Like what kind? Of, what was happening in that, in that part of your life for you to feel that way? Um. Not. Not. Well. So obviously I've gone through a couple of breakups, mm. but I don't think they was particularly something. I don't think the breakups themselves were, the, the, were a problem. I think being unhappy in a relationship is is more of a problem. Mm. And I think that sometimes going out and doing a job here or there, it would be like escapism because mm. you knew you're coming home to like a, a bit a bit shit in it, mm. or you've had a you've had a row or this that and the other. And it can almost I can almost go the other way. So like they'll be mad. Some one of them might be mad that I've gone out and done this job, which is my job to go to do this event or this, that, and the other. And there's girls there. Of course, it's going to be girls there. Mm. But I'm a trustworthy person. I've never touched anyone, never done anything like that. I've gone on record and said it. And it's mm. never happened. But then when they, they, you throw, and some people, sometimes people don't get it. I just go out and just get blottoed. Mm. Just to, just to like ignore what was happening on my phone sort of thing. Mm. And I think you just have a big disassociation. I just don't like going on my phone and, Mm. when everything's then evolves around your phone and this, that, and the other, I just wanted to be in the present and the way to do that was just mm. I, I, finish yourself I, I, off. I, I and then I'd wake up the next day and I've got the fear. And then you've got anxiety because you've missed all this shit. Mm. I, I always, it's almost like giving myself a reason to, to not do stuff. Mm. But then when I've not got, when all of it's building up and you've got a whole list of stuff from your management, you're like, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that serious anxiety and it's almost like a vicious loop then i'm like run away i'll go off and then i'll just go do something else and go drink and whatever mm. so it's like a, a cycle of that but then i think over time just that constant not really knowing how to balance things mm. i think that just gives me anxiety i've had my like, first panic attacks like really? last year yeah wow Do you know everything you say that it's it sounds like it's adhd yeah yeah so I, like, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I no, thought no. I was going to die, like genuinely. But everyone who's had a panic attack knows it feels, it does feel horrible. Mm. But I'm not saying it's like the worst thing in the world, but it is, it isn't great. But I haven't, I can, they can just be triggered at, at anything. It's, and I think now, because I've understood what it feels like to have a panic attack, I'm a bit more aware that I'm having a panic attack. Mm. 
So uh, <laughs> that sounds like a horrible question, but what was the situation where you found yourself in having a panic attack? Was it just like, because I've heard it can just literally just come out of nowhere. Um, I think the first, the first one was after I'd gone out. Mm. After, it, it's the, day, the morning after, I think. Mm. And I was, I had, a, I have, I'm a hypochondriac about my heart mm. because I've had like heart problems and stuff. Mm. Um, and when I was, just before I was going to go on tour last year, mm. I passed out in my, well, basically I was going out in my garden. This is so silly. Yeah. I was doing the lights in my garden, just yeah. putting some new lights in, walked back into my gaff to, to have a look at, have a look how they're looking. Yeah. And I just went whack and just passed out on my table. And then I was just, I'm like, I'm still got my eyes like slightly open. So I'm like this and I'm trying to grab my, um, my phone and stuff. Mm. Cause I was just like, I need to call someone ASAP mm. cause I live on my own. Mm. And then I was like, I could call 999, but then if I pass out on the phone, they're not going to know where I am. So I was like, I'm calling Ian, one of my managers. So mm. I called him and just said, just stay on the phone while I try and get out to the front of the house. So if, at least I've passed out, I'm on my front drive. So then all over the gaff, get to front door, knock on the next door. My next door neighbor's a doctor. And I didn't, no. I didn't even know this. Knocked on and he let me in. I just went whack through. Like as he's opened the door, I just gone boof, straight through the door. When I woke up, there's paramedics and all that shit. Wow. Um, and then we went in and they, they still to this day don't really know what, what happened. And it happened twice. So that was the day before, that was the day before I went on tour. So then there was like, I was like, can I go on tour? They was like, well, we've checked your vitals. There's, there's actually nothing wrong. You'd, you'd, deficient in um, your vitamins and everything's fine but something so, so it's either psych, it's either bra like brain or heart mm. and that just doubled my anxiety with my heart mm. then so even on tour i watched i can't remember the name of the artist some guy was performing on stage and he had a heart attack and he died on stage mm. and i was just like this could be me on tour really so i was just like then that was in my back of my mind so i was even when i was on tour some of the, sh the first two shows like i wasn't giving it everything because mm. i was like what if i but have you always been like this, though? Because it sounds like... No. Do you know what I mean? What, what, what's changed over the last few years? Do you think it's been in the limelight I, and the pressure I, that comes with that? I think so. And I think I think you just change with age, don't you? And, mm. and, th and certain things just worry you. And I think I've had like some... I don't know how that's... I think that's just developed over time. And I'm literally... If you would have spoken to me, Love Island time, mm. or the year after or whatever, I don't worry about a thing. Mm. Ever. Like, ever. And especially not health. Mm. But then... I see, just seen a couple of things happening, like family, friends, this, that, and the other. And, and you, you just, I was just like worried. I was like, shit, that could mm. be me next. Like I'm eating crap. I'm drinking loads. I'm doing this. Like that could be that could be me next. Like so mm. then that's just been in my head. Yeah. So then I think that health anxiety that was that was crap. That was crap. Mm. But I'm I'm a lot better with that now. Mm. Like I don't think about it as much. I think it's so important. Where it's like because I for one for no like I would never have thought for one minute mm. that you would have had all that going on. Yeah. And I think people look at people like yourself and myself and think, oh, they're always super positive all the time. They've got it easy. They don't stress about anything. And I think you talking about this will just help a lot of people because there seems to be a massive problem at the minute with anxiety. I get anxious. I mean, ask my team before you came in here. For some reason, I'm excited to do this. Yeah? I had, a, I was in the car and I'm I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like this. I'm, I, lo I love you. Like we're yeah, good mates. Yeah. And I'm just like, Oh, it's my it's my social anxiety now. Going into in cars in the car there, it happens like it, that is it. But why seeing my mate? It's mad. seeing my best mate, and yeah. I'm just like, <sighs> why? It's mad. it is nuts, but it's only developed, and I don't know what it is. It it has it's just developed S social media. I think it it could be it could be and COVID maybe like like I, I don't I don't know. I just it's just developed, but I'm, I'm managing it a lot better. And I'm now started medication for my ADHD as well. Mm. And that's been all right. But then now I've up the, they've upped the dosage and now I get double anxiety. So I've come off it. So it's like, fuck it out. I, I can't sort like myself. come down as well off the, the, no, the medication. No, I don't think so. No. Oh, really? I think because I was on really low and it was, I don't know if it was a placebo or not, but it was helping. Like yeah. I got everything sorted out and I'm not saying go out and get medication because yeah. you need it. You don't necessarily need it, but there's been myself and 
a couple of people that are around me that have started it that have, that have really it's really really helped out mm, so. i've just been diagnosed with adhd as well and i've not done it because i want the label or anything like that yeah i've just done it because i want to understand myself and also for other people to understand me yeah because yeah. i can be in a room with someone and they think i'm rude sometimes I'll be like and they're asking me something i'll be on my phone and i can't like do two things at once yeah, yeah. and it comes across rude and i'm like yeah. i'm not a rude person like i'm yeah. just not it's not in, in my vocabulary to be rude to someone i'm a people pleaser if anything so it's like more like understanding it. And I've not got all the answers yet. I don't think I want to go down a medication route. I want to do like the natural stuff. Like yeah, yeah. if I don't train in the morning, where's yeah, I'm like a different person. I, I realize now I train now, not just to look good, but I have to feel good. Yeah, yeah. I have to in the morning. Like it resets me. Do you think your anxiety, and this is me being a therapist on you right now, it's because you're quite, you're a smart guy. You're health conscious. I reckon you've looked after yourself over the years. Do you feel like because you've not been optimizing yourself, because you're not looking after yourself, yeah. deep down you're thinking, shit, man, I should really be doing this. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's getting started, isn't it? Like, yeah. But like, yeah, so I, I'm, I've just joined the gym. I've been twice. So that's a good, that's a good start for me. But what's happened was, because you, like, this you're is a the... fit guy. Like, even when you, I'm sure that when you went to Love Island, you trained a lot and stuff. Did you not? I did not? six weeks before Love Island. Did you? But I was, at that point, I was training Muay Thai. I was training football. You were active. I was doing, yeah. If you would have asked me then, would I ever do have live, live a life without sport? It would be, hell no. Mm. But then when I left, I was like, oh, I can't really join go back into football because that would be that would be weird because mm. I can't deal with getting absolutely battered by the opposition mm. every single game mm. and, and just didn't have time and then I was like well, I don't really I can't really go back to my old club at Muay Thai because it's in Stoke and I live in London now mm. so it's just like I was sort of making it a bit a bit of excuses really you're an all or nothing guy though so I, 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 can, I can imagine what you're thinking you're thinking if I'm going to go back to the gym I'm going back to the gym. Like yeah, hard. exactly. So you're basically you're putting a barrier. This is what I'm saying. So I'm like, if I'm gonna go back to football, I want to be playing semi-pro again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not playing for dog and duck. Yeah, that's. And if I want to go back Muay Thai, I want to go pro. Like I want to go big yeah. with it. And it's like when you got into music. I remember that period when you went into music. And like I think it was lockdown. Like and all I remember seeing was you were just in your studio, like on your, <laughs> on your own. Just like I think you were yeah. with Josh at the time. Yeah, I was yeah. with Dens. Yeah, and you were just literally. Someone said like you just you just didn't come out of his room. No, I didn't. Like you were just in your room, just making music. Like you just like tunnel vision. So maybe it's like that's a, that's a good with ADHD. It's, it's hyper hyperfixation. It's yeah. like, but this is the one thing that I've hyperfixated on forever and I've never never ever got bored of it. So that's why I know it's my thing. Just mm. so it's like. It's the one thing I can never, ever, ever get bored of. So like I can be in the studio like yesterday, sorry, not yesterday, day before I did like 18 hours. Mm. Yesterday I was up till 5.30 in the morning, just just going and then I remember, oh wait, I should probably eat some food because I hadn't eaten some, like, mm. the whole day or water. But like, that's the one, but I'm happy to do that. Like that's my thing. And I'm even if it's not even my music, if I'm writing for someone else, I love that. Like yesterday I was writing for someone else and or producing or mixing. There's so many different avenues that you can do with music that 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 that's perfect for me because it's mm. not just sing a song, done. It's not like play a game of football or go into a fight. It's you can produce, you can write, mm. you can do this kind of music, you can do that genre of music. There's so many avenues. So for me, it's the perfect mm. fixation because there's so many avenues. You it's endless, and uh, you can write. You can give me the same beat a thousand times. I write a thousand different songs. Do you see what I'm saying? It's, mm. They're all. It's always. So I just wanted to take a little moment before we crack on with the rest of the episode to let you know about something that I am super passionate about. If you followed me over the last few years, you know I've been on an incredible journey. I've managed to turn my lifestyle completely around and I've learned so much along the way. I've acquired various different tools. I've learned from so many different amazing people. And I've now managed to create my own wellness brand. I can't even believe it myself. Um, it's called Food for Thoughts, and we are now focusing on four key pillars. Nutrition, fitness, mindset, and connection. These are the four pillars that have got me to this point right now. We have just launched our brand new model in January, and it's gone off to a flyer. We've just signed loads of new members, and it's so beautiful to see everybody thriving at the start of this year trying something new, coming out of the comfort zone. And we've got a team of dedicated coaches and an amazing community that are going to help everybody get to where they need to get to. So if you're looking for a lifestyle change this year and you want to be surrounded by like-minded people on the same wave as you, and you want to have access to regular Zooms with specialist nutri coaches, Zooms with myself, guest speakers such as Ollie Ollerton, if you want to have regular fitness classes online and be part of amazing events on a monthly basis, then Food for Thoughts is for you. It's also for you if you feel like you're stuck in a rut, you're going around in circles, you feel unsupported, and you want to make some changes, but you don't know where to turn. 
This is the perfect one-stop shop to get you started and moving in the right direction. And remember, if you want to make some positive changes in 2024, head over to www.ft.com and take the first step in working towards your very own lifestyle change. Thank you for your patience and enjoy the rest of the episode. Mm, I Different. think one thing that you've forgotten to do, and I've, I've forgotten to do this recently, I've had to check myself. That's why I'm doing this Feb Reset Challenges. I've literally gone into the trenches with my businesses and, and work and stuff that I've literally just forgotten about myself. And without looking after me first, I, my businesses don't have anything anyway. And, and I think with you, it's like, it seems like you've gone like proper fixated on the music that you've probably forgotten to look after you first. first yeah, that was a big, a big thing. And I think, mm. yeah, for the, especially, I also it was imposter syndrome again. Like, it's just like, they, the comments get to you a bit, I think, mm. when people are like, you almost feel like you don't, you're not artisty enough. And I never really did the influencer thing. Mm. So I was never really an influence, but that's what I would have seen. So I went almost doubled down on what my head decided what an artist was. So mm. like cool pictures or I don't I post every month or every three months. Mm. So, do you know, like just because that's what I, in my head, what an artist would do. Mm. But really... Ed Sheeran's posting a weekly photo dump every week and promoting his song every every single... Mm. Chris, Chris Brown's promoting 10, 15 different posts every single... Like it's all changed. Mm. And I feel like I had this imposter syndrome where I was trying to be... Double down as this artist so I'd be seen as this artist. Whereas I wasn't just... You can be an artist in any sort of sense and I wasn't really... It, it's, not, it's not a nice place to be when you, you, you almost feel like you, you, you're suppressing your personality. Mm. for a long like for quite a, I was I was like mm. actively suppressing my personality like not laughing too much at this or doing that mm. that's crazy mm. me mm. so then now I've let go of it like I was dressed as Buzz Lightyear on my last TikTok last week last, <laughs> like do you know how daft that is like if you would have said to do that last year I would have laughed and like nah, would I see Dave do that mm. nah but I'm not Dave mm. I'm Wes I'm daft I'm goofy I wear purple blue and pink and I like to dress as Buzz Lightyear on oh, <laughs> TikTok. This, this is, Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's refreshing like, to hear, bro, because, like, I get it. Like, but can I just say one thing, though? Yeah. You're not an imposter. And what you're doing now, people say, like, used to say to me, well, you can't do, you can't be an actor and you can't be an influencer. You can't be a businessman and be an... Do you know what? It's all bullshit. Like, you make your own rules. And you know what you've done yeah. for the industry? You've proven that. Like, yeah. you have literally... Like, it gives me you, goosebumps, bro. Like, you've literally, one of the people have gone, you know what? I can go and do this. And it's mad for me to hear about the imposter syndrome because I'll tell the story, obviously, when you decided you wanted to go into music, you gave me a call and you said, Scott, you've got your contacts in the music industry. And I connected you with a few people at Atlantic and then obviously introduced yeah. you to, to Ryan. Um, then people contacted me, you know. Atlantic? Yeah, so the people that you showed me to, the, they was like, oh yeah, it's really good. Keep doing, keep doing your covers and keep blah, 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 and I'm sure you'll do great. Yeah, but all you needed was someone to believe in you in the yeah. same way you believed in you. But we talked about, we went to this, we went to this Warner Brothers event, right? And Wes comes up to me. And I'll be honest at the time, I just thought, Wes from Love Island, yeah? Just mm. like, I, I knew you had to say hello to and everything else. But you went, Scott, man, come up here. You took me to this hotel room, yeah? And you had your, your little <laughs> headphones. And he was like, listen to this. And he played his song. I was like, Batman. I was like, wow, this is a bang. <laughs> this is a banger. But do you know what I remember? And I swear to God to this day, is you looked me dead in the eyes and you were like, oh, yeah. I said, what are you going to do? You went, I'm going to make it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be an artist. Mm. I went, and even me, bro. Like, and I see the best in people. I was like, really? But then the way you said it, you went, no, I'm gonna do it, bro. I love telling people that story. Yeah. I love sitting down and telling people. I see Wesley <laughs> going. He told me he was gonna do this. Like French Montana, Craig David, Harry Capio. Like, so when I hear you say the imposter syndrome thing, it's really confusing for me because it's like, and I relate to it. It's like you believe yourself. You yeah. Back yourself. No, I, I back myself a hundred. Mm. The imposter syndrome was like my physical identity like mm. what i look like what i'll be wearing bruv i spent an absolute house on clothes mm. in a year F my dad was like you're an idiot like mm. and, I, and at the time i was like nah it's for my identity it's mm. for i've got to wear it in music videos so i was justifying it all because i was looking at like different artists in the uk and i was just like right they're wearing this lv they're wearing this they're mm. wearing that I've got to get everything. Mm. And it like a sickening amount. And I'm not even prepped. Like, it's. Did you sell the jewelry in that as well? I saw all that. Loads of it. Yeah. Like, but like, yeah, I've just sold like two of my watches, like these diamond watch. Like, it, it's so st stupid. Mm. Like, it just looked shit. And it mm. wasn't me. I was just wearing it to 
because I knew it would look like I'd fit in from the mm. outside looking in. Mm. Musically and with that, my passion for music, that was never a problem. My belief in making it as an, as an artist, that was never a problem. I never had imposter syndrome about that. Like I know that that's me. It was what I looked like from the outside, if that makes sense. How people would see me in a, in a club or this, that and the other and think, oh, he looks like an artist. Mm. When, 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 if you, if Ed Sheeran wasn't Ed Sheeran and you looked at Ed Sheeran, would Ed Sheeran be an artist? <laughs> yeah, it's mad. But he's the biggest in the world. Yeah. The, the, so then I was just like, what, I'm doing something double wrong here. So I just sold, sold, sold everything. So do you feel like you lost yourself? Yeah, like I, I did, yeah, hundred mm. percent. I can remember praying as well. So I've mm. become quite religious. Mm. I can remember praying, I was just like, I'm so lost. Like I'm just so lost. Mm. And I was just like, what am I actually doing? Like, it actually makes me upset. Mm. But then, yeah, I turned it all around and I was just like, you know what? I am who I am and this is like, I've just mm. got to move forward with it. Like, and it's that, going back to that self-belief and you know what it was? I actually started to look back at some of the comments and some of the things that people had sent me years ago. And I was just like, bro, I was so certain of who I was then. And even my content and bits I was putting out, so daft, like doing stupid dances, this, that, and the other. Because that's what I wanted to be seen as. And since I've started doing it again now, like my, my engagement's gone through the, the nice. fucking roof. Because people, and people have been actually messaging me saying, it's so good to see the old you back. Do you know how crazy that is? Because I haven't even said anything. Ah. I haven't done anything different. I've still been doing music, but people are saying, oh, it's good to see the old you back. I was ah, like, it's so mad, cool. do you know what? Because I, my, my team said the same thing to me. When they, they can tell when it's me. Like, yeah. not like, not like Scott Thomas on Instagram. They know when it's actually me. Like, and even like, for example, even my brothers and stuff, like we don't necessarily all watch each other's stuff because, and it really pisses me off. Like when I go on social media, I'm trying to be me. Yeah? I'm just trying to yeah. talk. Like, I'm getting better at it now because I'm dropping all this, like this guard, but I'm watching, like, oh, I, just, I say to my team all the time, oh, I don't sound like me. I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> yeah. I want to swear. Yeah. I swear, every, like for anyone who doesn't know me, like, I swear all the fucking time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I just want to swear a little bit more. Right. And I just want to be me. And it's setting me free, bro. Yeah. It's setting me free. And I think we've heard it all our lives, right? Just be yourself. And, and it sounds weird in a world where we are so kind of forward facing and we're putting ourselves out there. It's really hard not to lose yourself in, in the process. Yeah. And sometimes you convince yourself that it's you. Like I was convinced that was me. Mm. I was like, nah, this is the new me. This is the, this is I the I knew place. what you were doing though. I was watching you going, and I know what you're doing. I respect it yeah. because I could see that you were trying to go down that route. But you know what? And some people in, in the industry, you know, it's weird. It's catch 22 because it might have actually helped you in this some way. This is what ways. I'm saying. So I, I reckon, this is, I just don't know. <laughs> it's conflicting. It could have worked. It could have been like, okay, fair enough. He's, he does look like an artist now. But then at the same time, now I've, I feel like I've not established myself as like a, a mega artist, like, but I've, I've, I'm, I'm respected as an artist now, mm. I think, especially within the industry, because they know I'm writing for some of their artists on their label or they're doing, I'm doing this mm. and I'm doing that. So I know that they know now, mm. but it's, um, yeah, I don't know. I think now I've done that and I've tried that and I've spent that much money and whatever, mm. done it now. Do you think you have like, to go almost compromise a maybe a little bit of success for happiness? Do you know what I mean? It sounds stuff like it's you, you could you go have down that route. To, you have to. You, so I think some, this is the thing. I feel like you can't be successful without going to a, a bit of a dark place. Mm. And it sounds so cl cliche that people, people say, oh no, no, you can be happy. And do, you've got to take yourself to a dark place, whether it be, whether it be you working a little, working a lot more than you probably should be at this at this time of night, or you you're you you're not going out, and your your mates are going to to this place and doing that, and and you're not. That yeah, over time, it it, it will pay off. Like mm. it's going to pay off this time round with this Craig one. Yeah, this mm. one's been a good one for me because mm. I am so dialed in. Mm. Like I am double dialed in, so I barely drink now. Mm. Like I had a I. Had, Wines with Ryan the mm. other night at Dancing on Ice. Shock. Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we got number one that yeah, night. Yeah. So I was Big. like, I'm having, I'm, I'm having a wine. Yeah, yeah. Or 10. Yeah. Was Ricky there as well? Yeah, he was, yeah. It <laughs> was good. Crap. It was good. But then after that, I'm back in and I'm dialed in. And I know, and, and, I, and I manage it as well. So like, before I just drink, drink, I do this and I go out and I'm saying, you know what, I can probably get away with doing it tonight and I can do, and I can get up in the morning. And I could. Mm. but could I have been doing it better? Like, these are the things like, I give up smoking mm. weed, like mm. I give up smoking that because I'd wake up in the morning and yeah, I'd smoke it at the end of the night where I wouldn't feel, 
wouldn't feel like I'm I'm stopping um, what's it like productivity or, or I've done mm. all my stuff in the day, but I wake up in the morning and I feel a bit slow. Mm. Or do you, do you know what I mean like things like that? Just because you can get away with a bad habit doesn't mean it's not a bad habit. But when I first met you, I'm sure Wes, like I'm sure you weren't really into drinking. I'm sure you weren't into. Well, I remember hearing that you smoked weed and that, and I remember thinking that doesn't sound like Wes. Yeah, see this? I Does think that make sense? Yeah. Like I remember thinking that doesn't sound like Wes. Like, don't get me wrong, I wasn't a stoner, like, but mm. I would uh, I'd dabble in it, in, in it. But so it was just. I think that again was just like, that's not really me. So when I turn up to the Linen As I Go studio, I always want to look sharp. And for some reason, I want to kind of match the energy of my guests. And I know Wes is into his streetwear. So today I kind of mixed up a little bit. I've got an oversized hoodie on from Couture Club. I've got these really cool um, combat pants as well. And what I love about Couture Club is, first of all, I've supported the brand for so many years, but they have just leveled things up recently. Um, it's a whole new level to that, even to the point that all the girls in my team are banging on about it as well. They do men's wear, women's wear. And what they do is they give you premium brands at attainable prices. So it's like, it's not unaffordable. Um, and you can wear it for any occasion. If you want to go smart casual or even just in the daytime as well. Um, it's probably the coolest lifestyle brand out there for me right now. I know I'm a little bit biased, but I'm just going to be honest with you. Like I am wearing this stuff on a daily basis. So yeah, make sure you check it out and um, get yourself looking sharp. Mm. I think, do you know what? I didn't really... I didn't realize that this was going to be the main lesson from the podcast, right? And it's such a good one because I'm going through the same process now where I just want to be me. And I've been wrapped up for ages yet in this, what I've been fed about hustle culture, work all hours, no sleep, sacrifice this, sacrifice that. And I'm like, just fuck off. Yeah, it's, this is a <laughs> like, th it's, it's great and it can work for other people and it's easy to scream from the top of the mountain. But, wh but when, you, when you're actually trying to climb it, you've got to find your own way up. And I think everyone's... Everyone's everyone's recipe to success is going to be different. Mm. If there was one, we'd all follow it and we would all be successful, wouldn't we? Mm. But it's not. It's not the case. And I think the main part of it is is understanding yours and understanding yours is understanding yourself, right? So like, and living life in the wrong terms. Exactly. It's your it's your identity. So it's just figuring out what makes you happy, and and how you can how you can implement it in your life. Like, does will this make me happy? Will this take me? Will this move me forward? Answer yes. Cool. Do it. Mm. Answer no. Then don't. Like. At the end of the day, we just, I'd rather be, I'd rather be happy and doing all right than quadruple successful and feeling like mm. I'm living a lie or, or, or upset or, mm. or depressed. Do you know what I mean? So it's, you've got to find a balance. And I think that hustle culture is cool, but you can sacrifice so much of life. Mm. So let's, let's talk about happiness then for you. Like where, so obviously when you're in the studio with the likes of Craig David and these big artists <laughs> and stuff, yeah, like. <laughs> Is that when you're happiest? Yeah, yeah. Like by far. Like <laughs> wait, I'm just wait, I'm just trying to get my head around this because I listened to that Born to Do It album, mate, over yeah, and over yeah, yeah. as a kid, mate. It's like every every track I know word for word, yeah. Wow, didn't and, it? And I'm trying to put it in perspective, like you're making a track. And him buzz, I watched the, the footage, yeah. Yeah. And he's like buzzing off you and doing his like little skanking face yeah. to your limit, your and I'm like, what's going through your your head at that point? So I was just happy it all paid off. So basically we went, I did a blast, I was supporting Blast in London. What? And Craig, and Craig, <laughs> mad, that's even mad. so I was supporting Blasted London and Craig came and watched and he saw my set and he saw his backstage and he said, oh, that was really, really sick. I'd love you to support me in Ibiza. I was wow. like, let's run it. Mm. Let's go. So I did that. And then he watched me in there and he was, he was sh sh bigging me up on stage. Like when he'd come on, he was just like, oh, where's, you know what he said? Where's Nelson's the truth? I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> say it again, like Craig. <laughs> <laughs> say it again. I, like it. I was like, oh, but I was buzzing. Um, and then we spoke after and he was just like, oh, I'd love to, love to get in the studio. And I was like, oh, it's funny you say that. I've actually got a song for you, Craig. Complete lie. No. Complete lie. Like bullshit. Um, but it got my foot in the door. He's like, oh, sick, let's get something real soon then. I was like, cool, got my foot in the door and we're going to get it done now because I don't want it to be, you know, when you have them conversations with people when you're networking and then it never happens, does it? Because mm. it's too long. So I was like, oh yeah, let's run it. I've actually got a slot this week. Do you want to, let's, I'll come to you and we'll get it done. He's like, yeah, mm. cool. So now I'm on this, in the, in the, in the play and getting my notes pages out, looking through old beats and stuff. And I had one of the one that's my boy sent to me is um, Jersey Pop, which is like, has like a rhythm like, <laughs> But that actually fits with garage. It's around the same BPM. So I was like, that'll work. So I got that up, started writing it on the plane on the way home. Pretty much finished it by the time we got back, what? back home. Um, went in the studio in the next couple of days. And I was just like, oh, so I've actually, 
Here's the song that I, was, I said that I'd had. <laughs> Wait a second, were you on the plane or Wes? Where did Abra... Uh, I just had my earphones on and my laptop. I've got my laptop. I never travel without my laptop and my earphones. So what, so what, what was the thought process to, to that song, and those lyrics? So... Abra Kadabra. So it's... Because it's garage, isn't it, right? Yeah. So I was just like... I was trying to imagine that... I'll try and find the beat that I had before because it's not garage. So I was trying to imagine what would... What would what's Craigy? So it's just like something that's really R and B melody. Like it's like nice and floaty in R and B. But then when it comes to the hook, I was just like, what would Craig do? Because I know I want Craig to sing the hook, and he's got a piercing voice, and I know he's like he's he's got these really when he does his syllables, it's like really it's really nice diction. He's like, ba, 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 da. so it's like, bo selector. You know when he goes ah six six. Afra, good Afra. Wow. So I was just like. That makes sense, but then obviously changed the melody and and then and all the and the skippy flows that he does after where it's sort of like melodic rap. Like, I really shouldn't know that. So it's like I was just trying to make it Craigified and then gave it to Craig and I was just like, how's this sound? Then he's just like, sounds like me. I was like, cool. bro, I, I'm just sat here, mate, just in awe, thinking, how are you that musical, bro? Like you just. You're like you. So you producing? Are weird, you producing the songs? Like, what are you doing? How, yeah. Like, so that's so what on your laptop, lot, is that what you're doing? Mm, I've got loads on there. So you actually do you like make the beats and stuff? Or? Yeah, yeah. So and like, you write the lyrics. Yeah. And mix it. So there's a, so the with. with but wait, where did you where where did you learn this, Wes? Because there's no part of your life when you went to like music school. So I don't understand. It started, it started first when I, I had no idea anything about music production, right? So I'd go online and go music beat maker, music beat maker, maker, and I'd be yeah. like, right, let's let's see what that is, and it would be like five pads and no instruments, it'd be crap. But I used to go like, so my dining room was here, and I'd be on the computer here. My living room would be here, and I'm on the computer here. I used to open the door and show mum and dad, and I'd be like, oh, listen to this, and it'd be like some Tez beat. But I learned all about BPMs and stuff like that. And yeah, what age is this? That was I don't know, God knows I would have been like. Nine, ten. Oh, really? Like, so from being that, a kid? Yeah, because I wouldn't have known what the software was and I definitely wouldn't have been able to buy it because now knowing how much it costs is... So you've been hundreds. making music since a kid then? Yeah, but like I wouldn't necessarily... I wouldn't really focus that much on production. It was always singing. I'd always be singing. It'd be like, you know, like Toy Story, okay? Mm -hmm. You know when when Andy's coming and all the toys toys drop to the floor mm -hmm. and I, like they've not been doing anything? I, that's me. So I'd be singing in my room, singing, 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 and I'd hear like my mum's tread on the stairs or something. I'd stop. Or I'm in the shower and like I could hear my mom walk out or my mom and dad walk outside. I stop because I was so scared of like anyone else hearing me sing. Just do, that fear of being sort of judged because it's a, it's a vulnerable thing to do mm. sing right, and especially in Stoke, like if you're not a plasterer, a plumber, or a, an engineer, like you're a bit weird. But like, you're a I don't get this right because if I could sing, you would not be able to shut me up. Like I've got a mate, Brad Howard. I don't know if you met him before. You say this, but you see, you know how many people that sing but then kind of pretend they can't sing just to dumb it down. That's the fear of being judged because people that can sing, that scare, it's scary because there's people that can always sing better. Or there's someone that could sing sick, like, do you know what I mean? Really? You know what I'm, it's a thing. It's, and Mike, also, even Michael Jackson, apparently off stage, he was the, 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 the shyest guy. Yeah. Do you but know what then, I mean? You know when it started, I started singing in front of people, it was actually on the villa. I had to sing, uh, Dr. Alex made me sing when he left. He had to sing, I had to sing John Le Legend, Ordinary People when he left. He was like, that was his one request. They used to make me sing all the time, but they couldn't put it on the oh, show. Wow. But anyway, it, they got me like, so it all started when, but it was mainly singing. So my mom and dad bought me this karaoke machine. Didn't even work, which is probably a wise move from their part, to be fair, because I'd be screaming over it the whole mm. time. But I used to sing on that. That was really young. And then I got, when you get into the teen years, I was getting shy with it. So I can remember walking past like the, the music room in school and stuff. I'm like, damn, wish I could go in there. Mm. Or when we had music, I'd be buzzing. I'd be making certain melodies and chords and stuff like that. But I've never really been able to, read music mm. until just recently. Um, but my Nana had a keyboard at a house. So I used to go in, say hello, and then just run straight upstairs. And I'd just be figuring out songs. So not necessarily making my own songs, but like say if you gave me any song, I'll figure it out and play it. Mm. And then that's basically how I started the keys and sort of understanding notes and 
all that bits and pieces. So you've always been musical. So when you came out of Love Island, you had this big platform. How come you didn't just automatically just go straight into music? So this, is, this would be the great thing, wouldn't it? It would be like strike while the iron's hot. Mm. Like that would be the time that I did it. But it re in, real in reality, it took me another two and a half years till mm. I actually started doing music. The first time we saw three a years. Glimpse of you though was on X Factor when we went. That's like, when it really the, started. Yeah, you was in a band room and was like, oh, all right. But when Wes comes out, I was like, yeah, I know, I was rapping. I'm not a rapper. Like, it's, <laughs> like I, I have oh, never. Oh shit, yeah, you was rapping, weren't yeah, you? Like, I've never been a rapper. I think it was just like, oh. Again, lost your identity. Yeah, I was just like, you you do a rap. Like, first it was like, you do eight bars of rap. I was like, doing some nursery rhyme rap because you can't actually rap about anything that's fun. Yeah. And then they were like, all right, now do 16, now do 32 bars. And I was just like, getting more and more of these sections. I was like, I am becoming a rapper on this path. This wow. is mental, which is crap. But what was sick about that, and the reason that I did that is because I didn't really know enough about it. I wanted to know everything about music. So you mm. said about production and mixing and this, that, and the other. So when we go into these sessions in X Factor and we're making these songs, all our songs were original pretty much. I'd sit behind the producer and I'd just, everyone else would be chatting this, that, and the other. And I'd pull up a chair and just sit and watch everything he's doing and just go on my notes, just type down all the software he's using, every little bit of plugin. I'd take pictures of everything in the studio. I was like, right, a U, um, Neumann U87i, get that. Uh, uh, Apollo synth, let's get that. Let's get this keyboard. And I was just writing it all down. I was like, I've got some disposable income. I'm going to buy everything in this studio and I'm going to do everything that he's doing. And I just. Bro, you're Rayman. So I was just like, like you are literally right, man. Like, so was, I'm telling you now, right? You 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 say you're not intelligent, bro. I'm telling you, I put you in a business, yeah. <laughs> you will turn that business into a ten million pound business in two years. Like you are, I'm telling you now, you've got that. It's that next level. Like when you lock in, we're dialed in, man. Yeah, you're dialed in. So I was watching him. I was like, right. And then I'm just chewing his ear off, and it would probably mm. he was probably getting well <clears throat> fuming at me. I've actually mm. spoke recently, but um, he was just like. Oh yeah, so this is this, and I'm doing this now, and I'm doing this, and I'm like, why, why? My mum used to call me Why Bird because I just say why to everything. Mm. It's like, why is this? Why is that? So I'd be like, why is why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And how can I do this? Can you show me again? Can you do it one more? So I just watch everything, and then we did all right ish on the X Factor left. I was like, right, I'm gonna do it myself now. And then took a year out, split with my ex, moved out to to Josh and Josh Denzel's house. Mm -hmm. I was just like, right, I'm with the boys. I've got a room to myself. I've got all this gear, some idea. Mm -hmm. Let's figure this out. So then I just spent COVID just really writing, basically. Because that's the one X aspect that I hadn't really understood too well. And AO Beats, he, met, he produced my first couple of songs. He sent me a track. Um, Ryan, my manager, you know, right, Ryan, said, oh, Ayo is a great producer. He'll send you some tracks. And Ayo apparently just went, first two beats that he saw on his on his computer, he just went, right, cool, send him them. Send them to me. And then I sent him back, see nobody. And then I sent him. Man, and then he's, and then he's, see <laughs> nobody. Is, honestly, we was in the car, listening, bro. Like, we, every tune is a banger. Like, and, and I'll be honest with you, it's like, when someone comes out, like, and you know them. It's hard to kind of really get into the music. Yeah. I'm listening to your music, mate. Like it's Chris Breezy or some shit, mate. Like it's that it's that good, man. Thank you, man. And and I think like what I've noticed about you as more and more, people need to understand this. Like you're not just an artist that's popping up on a track or being like sponsored by a label and just kind of being manufactured. You are starting this shit from like from start to finish, producing, writing. This is what a lot of people don't. Most people don't even know I write my own tracks. But I've wrote most of their favorite songs until last night. I was with Redfern, one of my main producers, writing for someone else last wow. night. Wow. Um, and that was like a dance, sort of like Becky Hilly kind of track. Not for Becky. Yeah, yeah okay. Before we start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so but, people are coming to you now to write their music. Yeah. I'm not even surprised. I've it's been like, doing that for ages, It's like though. little things in the car before when you said so like, something like melanin, like mel mel it's sort of melanin in the skin, like, you know, when you um, like, yeah, I just yeah. thought it was clever. No, like if it, you heard the, the ones like, not like now it's nuts. just clever it's like and even the way you put like little, uh, like, little like it's just like <laughs> do you know what I mean you've just created your own style you've been fearless with it which is weird right am I right in thinking this Wes you are so confident in so many ways but then there's also like and the same with me there's a level of like insecurity as well yeah. in the heart of it which is weird isn't it it's like it's kind of conflicting it's it, we're people pleasers yeah we want people to like us yeah I mean everyone wants people to like them but some people don't care if people do or don't mm. I care mm. a lot yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's tiring, isn't it? So when people, yeah, and 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 you can't, so one of the main, main things, you can't say yes to everything, right? Mm. And 
yeah, I think we, we say, I, well, I say a y yes to a lot. Yeah, double yeah. book on this and I do this and that. Yeah. You can't say yes to everything because at the end of the day, everyone's not going to be happy with you. And that's a hard pill for both of us to swallow if you're people mm -hmm. pleasers. Not everyone is going to like you. There's a load of people that hate me for no reason that have met me, met me in their life. But when, they'd met, when they've met me, they're like, oh. Mm. I thought you was. A, what comments you hurt you the most, Wes? There's a few, you talked about comments before. Which ones like get like get to you? You know what it is. It's like it's not even anything about my music because music's no, it's a subjective. That's never a problem. Mm. It's when it's when people say you can't. Like I can't do something. Mm. See, or they say, oh, you can't do this. Yeah, you, you, can, you can't win a. Like I got nominated for a Mobo, and he was like. Oh, he can't win. He's from Love Island. Oh, wow. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Why? Mm. <clears throat> yeah, no, but we're not you're, judging you're, that. We're not you're, judging that. Do you you're see what doing I'm it though, bro. Like every single day. Exactly, exactly. But and and they that. But it kind of fueled me before. There was a post on Shade Bray yeah, before I dropped music. Mm. And I took a picture in a studio. I think it was an ad. And I took a picture in a studio. I was like, um, "We've got something cooking." The top comment: five thousand likes. Leave it in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's about to And I was like, that's so funny. That's so funny. But then I deeped it and then everyone was like, and I was like, damn, maybe I should leave bro. it in the oven. Like I can't even come back from it. And you could look at these comments and like, that is probably bro, one of the- Bro, I go through my TikTok, yeah. Cause TikTok's ruthless by the way, compared to Instagram. Yeah. yeah? Cause they don't know me as well from Instagram. Anyway, I go down, but all oh, these lovely comments. Scott, you're an inspiration. Scott, thank you for this. And there's one guy at the bottom going, bar off. <laughs> 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 I'm like I get some good ones, and like now I've started laughing at them. To be fair, like bro, you've I got to start laughing with them now. But when I was trying to act slick and cool, I'm like, that was when I was like, but why is this not working? Because in my head, I'm like, yeah. I look sick right now. I've got <laughs> this. I've got that. Why do we say it? Why are they saying I look weird? But then now, when I'm being myself, if you don't like me, that's cool. Yeah. Like you could say, oh, I hate your blue hair. Mm. You ain't got blue hair, so mm. it doesn't fucking bother you, does it? Mm. So like when you say, oh, I don't fucking like your music. You don't have to fucking like my music. My music's great. Yeah. It's so like, that's my psychology on it. It's like the blue hair psychology. Oh, bro, this is, this is uh, honestly, mate, it's, it's been an eye opener because even me knowing you like on the surface and stuff, not even on the surface, I've known you like on a, a bit of a deeper level than a lot of people do, but I didn't know that you kind of contradicted everything that I thought. I thought, I was about to get into go, where's like, you just seem like untouchable, like in terms of your confidence and everything else. And just, and this is what I'm saying, this is the problem with social media. This is the problem with like accepting people at face value and stuff. You don't know what's going on and you don't know what's going on inside Ever. you. And everybody's got their own shit going on. And I think this conversation, more than any other podcast I do, is going to help so many people because... That's, uh, that would be like, you know, it's, it's great that you said that because I can remember watching Lewis Capaldi's thing. Mm. I ain't compare myself to Lewis mm. by any means, but to see someone that was in the public eye that struggles just as much as him, I loved that. Mm. But then just seeing another bloke be honest and 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 talk about it. And now all my mates do the same thing. Mm. It's like we was at the t dinner table talking about this and we we're talking about that. And I was like, these are conversations I would never have had mm. a couple like a couple of years ago, or we've never even been except everyone were like, what are you talking about, bro? Like mm. it's weird. But as long as it's one person that listens and goes, oh, actually, you know what? Like everyone struggles or even if one of my struggles resonates with someone that's cool to me mm. because like when some when i've heard it on people talking on podcasts and i'm in it something resonates with me, i'm like damn you're not the only one that's the main thing isn't it you're oh not, that's how i feel right and now. everyone's everyone says like you're not the only one and it, it is it is true like mm. as much as we have meism about the world and we think every, the world's against us all mm. the world's against everyone do you know what I mean? everyone's, yeah, it's, it's, everyone has their own problems and listen my problems are nowhere as deep as some other people's problems and I'm not saying that but we all have our own problems and not everything's as sweet as Wes, it seems I have think. a sick life I have a sick life yeah. like I know I do but I still get stressed out I'll still wake up in the morning yeah. overwhelmed <laughs> I'm overwhelmed coming in here to sit down with you which I'm buzzing about yeah. like this social anxiety like it's yeah. why yeah. and I'm telling you now it's not our fault it's no. the world we live in yeah. Like the world we live, I've read a book called Stolen Focus and it says no matter what you do, like to not distract, to not get distracted and stuff, the whole world is designed to distract you. You're not meant to be disconnected. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like we used to, like when growing up as a kid, and you might have missed a generation, I don't know if you did or not, but it's like, we didn't have mobile phones, bro. And we just went out on our bikes and with our mates and like, do you know what I mean? And yeah, it's, facts. And, and it's like, yeah. everybody's lost that. And it's, and it's catch 22 because I love social media. I love the part. I love connecting with people. I love inspiring people. But I just can't wait to get off my phone. Well, sometimes like, I've said it a million times and I feel like 
it was maybe a nice period of time when I wasn't going on social media and stuff so much because I, so, I never really felt so connected with that being connected. If that mm. more social, the more I'm off social media, I've never been so mm. like settled with myself. If that makes sense, but I, I think that was also a lie because because I was getting rid of the the persona on social media. I was just then drinking and doing stuff with my mates, which probably wasn't even me either. Mm. So I think it's just finding a balance, isn't it, of being social, being connected to people reaching out to your fam, reaching out to your friends, because I'm bad with that. Mm. Like I can go missing from conversation. That don't, it's not, no love lost or anything. My mates just get me now. Mm. Where I just I might just go missing for, for a, a hot minute. Yeah, yeah. But they know I'm doing my thing. And mm. if, I, if I'm, if I'm going to say something or I need something, I'll, mm. I'll show George them. Heaton, uh, who owns Represent, he put something out. It's just saying something about um, my best friends and know, understand that I'm on a mission and they're cool with that. Do you know what I mean? And he don't, yeah. do you know what I mean? And I, I'm a little bit like that. And sometimes people might say, we're just being selfish, Scott. It's just about you and your best. It's not, it's just, I can't help like what I'm driven by, yeah. but I am working really hard to get that balance and keep exactly. yourself in check. Yeah, I think, because I think we, it, it helps with it as well. Mm. Cause there's sometimes like I've, I've, I have been a bit too work focused and I'm not focused on the right, not, not the, the nights out and not this. I mean, like just firing a message. Yo, 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 bro, you good. Like for not just a, mm. not, there's no reason. It's just a, What's happening? Like, what's going on? Instead of it just pinging up in the group chat or someone putting some banner in the group chat, yeah, that's cool. It's like a passing comments and this, that, and the other. But instead of just going, like, how often do you actually reach out to your mate and just go, yo, bro, are you good? Mm. Just for a chat. Like, what? not as much as a, bro, like girls do it. And I think that's why guys suffer in silence a bit more. Mm, bro, I had a, no way of lie, mate. I met a, <laughs> sound so, so wrong. Yeah? <laughs> I met a guy in a jacuzzi, yeah? <laughs> so wait, wait, where's this? Where's I, remember, this? I, oh, I was having like, a proper heartfelt nah, moment. I met a guy, I went for a, went for a steam and soda, I was sat in, in the jacuzzi and this guy started talking. I had a 45 minute conversation with this random guy, mate, and there was no agenda. Yeah. There was like, there was, I didn't want anything from him. He didn't want anything from me. We were just talking about this kind of shit, yeah? And it was amazing. And it's like, I went, how often in life do we just have a conversation with someone where there's no agenda, it's just like, I'm going in there. They don't know who I am. I don't know who they are. And it's just like, wow, this is what human beings are meant to be like. Because I think most, I, I, that's the, that would be the case with talking to loads of people. Like so many people are like us and we just, we choose not to believe it. Like, and so everyone's going through the same. It's like that. It's like me as everyone thinks that like the, the problems that we all have, there are our own problems and no one's going through them. But yeah, we might have our own select problems, but everyone has their own select problems. And like you said, you didn't know what was going on with me with the surface. I'm sure if we had a deeper conversation, there'd be some things that you talked to me mm. about as well. So it's like, you just never know. But when would we get, when would we get put in this environment though? No. Like if I chat to you and it's like on Instagram, yes yeah. bro, big track, da, da, da. <laughs> or when I see you now, yeah, that's what you say. But like, it's really rare to get these, this is why I love doing this podcast because it's yeah. like, these conversations. It's like, like therapy for me, bro, I love it. Bro, it's like I therapy. talk about things now that I've never even spoke about before. So. Yeah, I can tell man. And it's been, it's been incredible bro. But I think one thing that stands out from you Wes is like, I love that because I'm trying to get there as well, just being your authentic self and not giving a shit. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm, I'm try I think it's a work in progress and I don't think you can ever really know yourself because you, you're always changing, right? So I think it's just understanding that. Like, mm. I'm not the person I was five years ago. I'm not the person I was yesterday. Mm. But you, you just figure it mm. out. And I think as long as you're open to figuring yourself out, that's So, that's so this thing. Wes right now is turned up, right? In all the bright colours and everything oh, yeah, else. He's, like, he's pink as hell, isn't he? Right, is, is, this, is this you? Yeah, yeah. I love that. Like I look a bit, I look, I look like a strawberry ice cream. I don't even know what I look like, a bubblegum ice cream I like cream it. Maybe. And I've got you, by the way, I've got you some uh, goodies from Couture, Couture. Club as well. So oh, they're, obviously lev they're, le they're leveling up as well, man. Bro, tell me about it, man. They Everyone are. say, I mean, even the social PR girls are going yeah. shopping in Couture Club now. Yeah. Like to the point where they're it. saying, it's like, it's, yeah, I'm all right though. Yeah. It's a vibe. But obviously I've, I've been um, friends with the boys for so long, but to see the way that they've like turned around, they're kind of like, Almost like rebranded in a way. Yeah, hundred percent. Like when I've seen you wearing these bits, I was like, all right. Yeah, and it just feels like they've gone like they've got that premium brand, but like at attainable prices. Attainable price. That, yeah. That's what it's all about now. Like obviously we have our nice bits of design again and stuff, but at the same time is this can go with everything as well. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But I just think like for me now, Wes, I just don't know where you're gonna take it, bro. Because you you keep like how far can you take it in terms of the levels that you're gonna go to? How far can I? What's, what's, see, all right. see, you what, know, where do you see yourself in five years? In happy and in and around music. Mm. Just happy. I, on it, and it sounds so cliche. It's like, oh, new, yeah, that's such a new thing. Happy, it's like, but you're constantly chasing that. We're never true, like, we're never always, like, fully satisfied. Like, I can be happy, but never satisfied. That's the thing, right? Mm. Like, I can always keep moving, but as long as I'm happy going along the way. But 
like in terms of like we did great the other day, the the accolade and this, that and other, that's great for a bit of external mo motivation. Mm -hmm. But for me, the one thing that I want to always be in and around is as long as I am in and around music, I'm happy and healthy. My family's happy and healthy. I'm good. Mm -hmm. I can die that way. Mm -hmm. Like I could die that way and then and be and be on my deathbed and, and I could be on my deathbed and go, I'm happy. Mm. I wouldn't need to have re reached billboard number one. I don't need to reach this, that, and the other because I think they're, they're, they're great. They're, they're milestones, but at the same time, once you've reached them, and I can guarantee anyone who's probably reached them, they're not like, okay, I'm done now. They're, they're more like, well, now what? Mm. So you, 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 you're just constantly going to be chasing something. Mm. Listen, they're great, and I want my music to spread to as many people as possible. So doing these big tours and stadiums that's cool because i can spread my music and i can perform and i can feel like i can reach and connect with so many people that's a, another goal i'd li like to connect with more people but not for the numbers sake and not for the the accolades sake just genuinely for for just mm. share because you know how sick it is doing shows you see people singing your your music back and you or i sing a sad song and i see someone crying and like weeping in the front i'm like damn like that's a, that is a crazy crazy feeling and it's touching people in ways that you didn't even you don't oh, even God. realize when you when you're writing it so then if i can do that on a bigger scale that's amazing mm. i can't even imagine it. To, be, to be fair bro even like for me mate like even when i saw you walk out in the love island villa mate and i just got i got goosebumps mate like and i get goosebumps when i listen to your stuff because it's that good bro thank and, you bro and you can tell it comes from the heart and even just sitting Danny, I'm so glad that you've done this pod, bro, because I feel like... I'm glad, I'm glad. Everybody deserves to see this side of you. You deserve for everybody to see this side of you because there's so many layers to you, man. And it's, and I think that's what makes the best people the best people. Like, it's not just like... And I, I generally thought at one point, like, there was kind of like... Not just one layer to you, but it was almost like... You're untouchable. And you know when you meet people who are just basically like, yeah, I don't need anyone and I'm okay and I'm just going to... On my on my mission and this and that. And it's kind of like... I'm Sometimes I envy that because I'm a little yeah. bit like... I'm like, shit, man, I'm confident, but... I need no one's to, ever that Do you confident. know what I mean? I don't think anyone's ever that confident. Mm. And if they are, it's like delusion. Mm. And they're like sort of doing it to kid themselves, which can work, I mm. get that. But like, I think there's always more. There's always more below the surface, right? Mm. But I'm I'm just a bloke from Stoke and I like making music. That's mm. me. Make me one promise though, bro, because I, I know it when I see it. Go You've got to start just looking after yourself. Yeah. Do you know no. what I mean? Yeah? Oh. Deal? Do you know what I mean? A little bit of gym, check, check, eating check. some better food and stuff like, because I just know that's the missing thing for you. Yeah. Because I've been there, bro, with like, and, and you know deep down yeah. that's the one no, thing that you're missing. 100%. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And I don't know why I'm saying this, because if I see this guy shredded in like three weeks, which you probably will do, <laughs> I'll just be fuming. But honestly, bro, it's been a pleasure, man. What, no, genuinely, one of my favorite pods today, because I'm just shocked. I'm like, wow, I didn't even see this coming. Yeah. But it's amazing to see this side of you, bro. And Thank I, you, I'm man. No, I've really like, enjoyed it. Thanks for having me on. Legend, man. Right across the West. Wow! Bro! That's good. Joe, you just caught me a guard, bro. I'm not going to lie, that podcast has knocked me for six because I felt like I knew Wes. But in this episode today, he's shown a side to him that I just, I'm so glad that he's got to show because there are so many more layers to him. And I've always admired Wes for his confidence and he's definitely got loads of that. But underneath it is... A lot of the stuff that I can relate to, imposter syndrome, insecurity, and that is part of being a human being, right? And I think him talking about that on this episode is going to help so many people because I know it's helped me. And social anxiety and anxiety in general is something that's troubling so many people right now. So for someone like him to talk about it, I think he's really special. And I'm not going to I'm not gonna lie, it's one of my favorite podcasts to date. And I would listen to that and get so much out of it. So I hope you have too. Um, thank you for tuning in for another episode of Learn As I Go. Like, I'm just so proud. We are raising a bar every single week now with these guests and your support means so much. To see all your messages saying how it's kind of helping you on your journey and everything else, that is what life is all about for me. And I'm just so grateful. So please keep listening, keep tagging me in your stories and I will see you next week for another phenomenal guest. Thank you and I'll see you next week.